in miracles, an expression given new meaning by the unrehearsed testimonies of guests from many walks of life. Today's special telecast is dedicated to you, whose common bond is the discovery that the touch of faith is a vital and contemporary encounter. Now, Catherine Kuhlman. calls them the Jesus people. <laughs> but in reality, they're heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ and Jesus. They're his children. They know Jesus as their Savior in the forgiveness of their sins. And I'm just proud to be one of them. <laughs> and I want you to know something. These are young people born again. Dwayne, that's what the world doesn't understand. And Chuck Smith, do you know something? I think that even some of their own fathers and mothers do not understand them. That's very true. You, you know, uh, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> you come home and you say, Mother, I've been born again. And she looks at you and she wonders what you're talking about. <laughs> and maybe a, a young man comes home and said, Dad, I, I know Jesus as my Savior. He's come into my heart. I've been born again. And he looks at you, right? That wonderful experience, that new birth experience, is the greatest in the world. And these young people have been born again. And remember something, Jesus is not a myth to them. The word of God is not a myth. The great miracles in God's word are not myths. Their reality and Jesus is a person to them. A person as real as the one who's sitting next mm -hmm. to them. Well, Chuck, it's worth giving a life for, isn't it? It certainly is. And it's so beautiful to have this opportunity to just share it with the world. That thousands of young people are coming to know the life-giving power of Jesus Christ. Drugs isn't where it's at. It's Jesus it. is where it's at. <laughs> this is beautiful. <laughs> oh, where's Marcia? Marcia is over on her right over there, and she has a word to tell us that I'm sure that'll just really be thrilling. We're in the singing group called the Children of the Day, and the song that we're going to do for you is when that the Lord gave to me about two weeks after I accepted him. We've all been, we all turned two just this summer, two years old in Jesus. <laughs> and when I, when I sat down to try and write this song, it was because I was really frustrated. So many new things had happened to me and I wanted so badly to share them, but it wasn't like before when I'd wanted to share my dope and when I'd wanted to share my philosophies and, you know, all the little trips that I had, people listened to those because they were kind of fun to listen to. But when I wanted to talk about Jesus, it was a completely different thing, and they didn't, either they just said, yeah, she's on another trip, don't worry about it, <laughs> or else they said, you know, oh, I don't need it, that's for you, it's your thing, <laughs> and stuff. And so I really wanted really badly to be able to share what had happened, and I sat down one day and just prayed and prayed for a way to be able to tell people, just say, this really did happen, and I didn't want to shove it down your throat. I just wanted to let you know it really happened. And the Lord gave us this song.
of one person. This is not a fad. This is not just a passing fancy. Every person living who believes that this is God's word is a Jesus person because the Bible is the revelation of one person and that one person is the son of the living God. You know, Dwayne, if you really want to know what these young people are like, they express their feelings in the songs that they write. And I think the one thing which is most evident in all of the music of the Jesus movement, the real Jesus movement which is happening today, is the fact that all of the music, it seems, is based on Scripture That's right, and on the, the Bible That's and right. on what the Holy Spirit gives in the media of music. But so much of it is just plain Scripture. And some friends of ours who oftentimes are with us on, on some of the Jesus festivals that we're having across the country is a group called Harvest Flight. And the leader of the group is Evan Williams, and his father is a doctor, in fact, a neurosurgeon who has written a book about how that he gives all of the glory and all of the credit to Jesus for the healings which he has seen happen through the surgery. And uh, I wonder if it would be all right if Evan would give his testimony before they sing. Just love it. For so many years, I searched for answers to life 
what I was going to do, a purpose in living. I just wanted peace. I just wanted to be happy and have a direction. And the search led to a lot of things. Drugs were only a part. But it wasn't until I gave my life to Jesus and asked him into my life that I really found real peace. And I started studying the Bible and learning about Jesus. And I read about this peace, and I'd just like to share it with you, because you can know this peace too, wherever you're at, by just asking Christ in. These are the words of Jesus. Peace I leave with you, my peace give I unto you. Not as the world gives, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Jesus has already won the victory, and you can know that victory too. And the Lord is now my shepherd, my leader. The 23rd Psalm, which is so familiar to all of us, sometimes we just pass it by because it is so familiar. And the Lord has just laid it upon us to set it to music in a different way. And so I just like to ask that wherever you are, that you'd bow your heads and listen to this Psalm as if it was the first time because the Lord can be your shepherd too. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. One of the young men, Catherine, who has been so used of God is Lonnie Frisbee. And I wonder if Lonnie could just share with us some now. Well, the people tell me that I'm trying to look like Jesus. I can't think of anybody else I'd rather look like. <laughs> Jesus, he changed my life, and I, I kind of relate it to like David the psalmist when he says that thou hast lifted me up from the dunghill and he has placed my feet on a solid rock and Jesus has lifted me up out of a horrible pit he's washed my my heart from all the sins and all of the, the evil that I had gotten myself into and since then I'm all cleaned up now <laughs> and Isn't that a wonderful feeling yeah <laughs> and only Jesus could have done it that's right. 
He's, give, he's given me a message in my heart. And that, that's a message, he says, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. He said, he that believes and is baptized shall be saved, and he that believes not shall be damned. And he, and he said in his word to me, I would receive power after that the Holy Ghost would come upon me. And I waited upon the Lord, and the Holy Ghost came upon me, all right. <laughs> yeah, I got it down to the tips of my toes. And, and so the message is that these are the last days and that Jesus Christ is returning really soon. And the prophet Joel and the prophet Peter said that in the last days, that God would pour out his spirit upon all flesh and that his sons and daughters would prophesy and that his servants and handmaidens would speak forth the anointed word of God. I'm a servant of God and I'm a child of God and God is raising up from the very bottom and he's raising up the, the foolish and what the world considers That's dumb. Right. Yeah. And he's, he's putting his spirit upon them and he's anointing them and they're starting to preach the gospel and thousands of people are starting to get saved everywhere. And so... It's thrilling. It sure is. <laughs> <laughs> and so because these are the last days, God has chosen himself some prophets. And the church for so long has been expecting a certain mold of, of what a Christian should look like or what a Christian should be or what a Christian should say. And God is blowing everybody's mind <laughs> because he's saving, he's saving the, the hippies. And nobody thought a hippie could be saved. <laughs> and so he's pulled us up. He's given us the message. We're going forth and proclaiming the good news. Jesus is coming back. Repent and turn to the Lord and save yourselves from this evil generation because he comes to judge the quick and the dead. How has he changed your life, Lonnie? Well, the Lord says, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things pass away and behold, all things become new. He's changed me all around. Really? Inside out, through and through. <laughs> <laughs> and the things you once loved, you have no desire for at all, right? just went right out and he says I'll take your stony heart of unbelief and I'll put a new heart within you and place my spirit within you too and so everything changes he says I'll become a well of living water gushing forth from within you and that well of living water gets out everything else and the new birth experience is real sure is <laughs> it's the most real thing in the world he's really really real <laughs> he's talking about yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh bless ya he's coming back again believe me are you ready are you ready for that meeting in the sky are you ready are you ready for that meeting in the sky With all of his might Are you ready, are you ready For that meeting in the sky Are you ready, are you ready For that meeting in the sky Are you ready, are you ready For that meeting in the sky For the dead will be quickened And with the living will sing Hallelujah, hallelujah To the heavenly King are you ready, are you ready for that meeting in the sky? For the Lord will descend with a mighty shout. The lightning's gonna flash across the sky. Then the clouds will roll back like a scroll to reveal the God man thought had died. Are you ready, are you ready for that meeting in the sky? Are you ready, are you ready? that meeting in the sky for the saved will be caught up with the lord in the air to dwell with him in high places there are you ready are you ready for that meeting in the sky are you ready are you ready for that meeting in the sky
Jesus said, I am the way. And there is only one way, just one, not two, just one way. And Jesus is the way. Jesus, the Son of God. I am life. I am eternal life. And no man and no woman can have eternal life except through Jesus. I am the truth. Absolute truth. This is truth. Know that. And the word says he's coming back. This same Jesus, not another Jesus, not mere man. He died. But no tomb could hold his body. The Jesus that we believe in, the Jesus that we believe in, rose from the dead. He's seated this very moment at the right hand of God the Father in position of great high priest. And he promised that because I live, ye too shall live. And this old earth is only the end of chapter one. The rest of the book is written beyond the grave. Amen. Life holds meaning. And those who know the way and those who know the truth have eternal life. And there is no death for God's children. He's coming back, the same Jesus. Are you ready? Let me ask you. Are you ready? Neutral you cannot be. That's impossible. It's absolutely impossible for you to be neutral. No man can be neutral. If you're a part of humanity, you're going to have to do something about this Jesus. You've got to do something about this Jesus. Either accept him or reject him. Father God, hear that prayer of confession and repentance just now. That one opens their heart to you. To touch that one. He touched me. He is new to you, and you have many questions concerning it. Catherine Kuhlman pledges her personal and confidential attention to letters of inquiry. Simply address Catherine Kuhlman, Post Office Box 3, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. That address again, Catherine Kuhlman, Post Office Box 3, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Join us again next week when the Catherine Kuhlman Foundation will present another in the series of telecasts I believe in miracles. This is Art Gilmore speaking.